Thank you for stopping by Ballistic Barbecue on this video. I'm gonna be cooking up a bacon wrapped peach glazed pork loin. We're gonna be rocking the big green egg with the jotisserie ring. Let's get going. All right, on this video, I teamed up with the folks over at Aption Labs. I'm going to be doing a demonstration on how their meter wireless thermometer actually works with a rotisserie. So we're gonna be able to monitor the entire cook on a rotisserie, which is exciting. There's, there's no other thermometers on the market that can do that that I know of. First thing we're gonna start off with is the bacon weave. I have here six strips of bacon and I just sort of gauged how many strips based on the size of the loin. I'm going to take every other strip and just pull them back right now. Lay that first strip across. Bring these back. Now we're going to take those strips that we did not pull back, pull those back. Lay that next strip. Bacon weave is done. I have here a, it's a little over three pounds pork loin. I'm going to go ahead and lay that evenly on the weave here. Now I'm going to very carefully roll this up. Now I have some toothpicks and I'm just going to go ahead and pierce these in here. Just hold it in place. I am going to be trussing this loin with butcher twines because it's going to be on a rotisserie. So this bacon wrap is going to be nice and secure, believe me. All right, let's get this thing trussed up. So the challenging thing about trussing this right now with the bacon weave is just going to be not jacking up the bacon weave. make it pretty tight. Again, the bacon's going to shrink, the pork is going to shrink. Let's go ahead and secure that knot. And here's where the challenge is going to come is with these toothpicks. That wasn't that bad. right here where this loop is formed and pull it nice and tight just to draw everything together. Take that tag in that we had left over. Tie a nice little knot there. And there we go. I'm going to trim these bacon, just these flaps, just they're going to be flapping around. Looks good. Since we're glazing it with this, you know, kind of a peach glaze, it's going to have this kind of a holiday thing going on, very ham-like, I guess. I'm going to take whole clove and just pierce them through here. This will kind of spice up the bacon a little bit more and as the bacon fat renders it's going to be mixing with this you know clove and kind of give that ham effect going on here it's going to be really good now it's time to get this pork loin on the rotisserie rod here and i already have one of the tines on the back tine just want to make sure 
I don't, you know, break that string that goes right down the center here. We just want to make sure we get it centered. And there we are. Now let me show you how this meter works. So here is the meter right here. It's in its block, which is also the charger. Runs off a couple batteries. When I pull this out, it actually turns the meter on. Now, it operates off of an app, which obviously I already have downloaded onto my phone here. So let's go ahead and pull this out. You can see it just went live. I think that's pretty cool. This is magnetic, by the way, so you can stick it on your cooker or whatever, your oven. So let's go ahead and set this cook up. Set up cook. Push that. You can see <laughs> the cute little faces of the animal that you want to cook. We want to cook, obviously, pork. Then you have a choice of cuts. We're going with loin, and it suggests 145, which is where I like it. Now we're going to go ahead and insert the probe into the loin. So the probe has a notch right about here. You wanna make sure that you insert it past that notch. Obviously on this cut, we wanna make sure that we're not making contact with the, uh, with the rod here. So I'm gonna put it in at an angle. And there we go. So now obviously we're not cooking yet, but just for demonstration's sake, I'm going to show you the next step will be start cook. And it gives you some instructions on how to insert the meat probe, which obviously we already did. Push start cook, and now we're going. That box had just popped up, it's funny. So when I do videos, I shut the sound off on my phone and it's warning me of that because it, does, it gives you alerts. You can set alerts. I have an alert set for five minutes before the cook is done to sound an alarm. So I'll just hit OK. Thank you. Pretty cool. Let's go ahead and go outside. I'll set it up on the rotisserie and then I'm going to show you how we're going to link this with another device so I can monitor this cook from literally anywhere. Let's go outside. As I mentioned, I'm going to be using a big green egg today. Right now I have it preheated. I'm going to be running it between 300 to 325 and I have that jotisserie ring installed. Let's go ahead and get that pork loin on. Excuse this hot sun, it's coming through right now. And we are cooking. Let's go ahead and see what that meter is doing. All right, so as you can see, the meter is running. It's telling me the internal temp on the meat is 58. The target temperature is obviously 145. Just closed the lid on this thing not too long ago. Temperature's rising, 230 seven right now. I want to go ahead and monitor this cook from inside my house or wherever. I'm going to use my iPad mini as a bridge. They call it meter link. So I have the app on my iPad mini and you have to make sure that both devices are on the same network, which they are. I'm going to go ahead and open this app right here, meter. And you can see right now we're good to go. I'm going to push this a little icon right here and you'll see the three little dots, the little bridge, I guess it's three linked dots, which is telling me that we are linked now. We are now using meter link. I also have a function called meter cloud activated. So the clouds there, I can take this to the store now, take my iPhone to the store and I'll be able to monitor or even change my target temperature is whatever on this cook. So pretty darn cool. So you can see the elapsed time, 23 minutes. We haven't been cooking 23 minutes. That's from the time I turned it on inside my kitchen to setting up all my gear and getting all the shots aligned is what, what that's representing, which is kind of interesting. I, you guys probably don't think of that, I guess, but it's, uh, it's different when you're cooking with a camera, believe me. Now the other thing we can do is hit this little icon here and it'll give us a graph. You can see it's pretty flat line until I put it in the, the green egg here and that ambient temperature just climbed up like Mount Everest there. So pretty cool. There's a lot of cool things. 
when we're done with this, I'll show you the graph of the entire cook. It's pretty cool stuff. And the folks over there at Aption Lab are actually going to be providing free shipping for you guys. I'll have a code that I'll have down below in the additional description box, whatever they call that show more area down there. So rather than schlepping all my camera and lighting stuff back in the kitchen, I'm going to go ahead and whip up this glaze that we're going to use when this is done right here on the edge of my big green egg. How cool is that? So I have here one half cup of peach preserves and I do have a little bit of peach wood in with this cook by the way adding a little smoky flavor one tablespoon of English mustard I didn't want this to be crazy sweet I wanted some heat and I love the heat that English mustard has one tablespoon of coarse ground mustard here or whole mustard two tablespoons soy sauce one tablespoon grapeseed oil. I'm using grapeseed oil. It's what I add on hand. Use whatever oil you want. One tablespoon apple cider vinegar. Then I have here one teaspoon ground black pepper, one teaspoon red pepper flakes, one half teaspoon salt, this coarse kosher salt, and then one half teaspoon ground allspice. Toss that in. So I'm simply going to mix this up really well get it on the stove top and I'm going to reduce it. I want it to come out to a nice kind of a syrupy glaze consistency. And we're going to baste this pork loin with this glaze probably 10 minutes or so before it's done. See you guys in a bit. So now the loin's actually been cooking a few minutes and a feature popped up that I did not want to forget to tell you guys about. Once you start the actual cook, based on the temperatures that are going on in here, the meter starts making calculations and it actually calculates how much time it's going to take to cook whatever meat you're cooking. And as you can see right now, we have one hour, eight minutes left cooking time until this loin is done. I'll see you guys when it's ready to baste with that glaze. See you in a bit. Okay, we have about nine minutes left on this cook and it is time to baste this pork loin with this glaze we made, that peach glaze. Smells absolutely amazing. So like I said, we have, well, about eight minutes left now, but I'm actually, I'm going to cook this until the glaze is set where I want it. And I'm guessing probably eight to 10 minutes will do it fine. See you guys in a bit. Okay, as you can see, it's alerting us removed from the heat. And now it's going to give us our resting time. So it's actually factoring in the carryover. Let's check it out. Gorgeous. So I'm going to go ahead and pull this off the heat right now. I'll be right back and we'll go over the graph of the cook. Okay, one of the cool things about the meter is the fact that it does graph all of your cooks. And I have this last cook, the pork loin cook, right here in front of you guys. So you can see the green line, that's the internal temperature, the ambient temperature, the internal temperature of your cooker the egg in this case. You can see way down here, that's when I was in the kitchen yapping at you guys. It spikes up to the low 300s. That's when you guys saw me put the pork loin on. And I was rolling in the low to mid 300s for a while. Then it came up and stabilized at 325. And I rode that 325. I mean, it was pretty stable cook. And then here's where that dip here is when I open the lid to baste it with the glaze. Purple line down here is the internal temperature of the pork loin. You can see just a nice steady increase until it hit that 140, 141. The meter calculates carryover. It knew my target temperature was 145 internal. So it told me to pull it off and it, the carryover is going to bring it up to a nice 145. Anyway, the loin is resting in the kitchen right now. Um, I'll meet you guys in the kitchen. We'll slice it up and see how it tastes. And here we go. Pork loin has been released from its binds and it's all rested and ready to be sliced up. Let's give this thing a try. Very tender. Moist. Wow. Little smoke ring going on.
Nice. Smells so good. And the wood, the, the smoke smell is definitely coming through. Wow, it is tender. Well, this cook definitely turned out how I was hoping that it would turn out. This is something that I would definitely do on the holidays, Christmas, Thanksgiving, Easter, whatever. The, the cloves are coming through and that glaze, you know, with the different spices and then also the heat going on, it's definitely not overly sweet. It, it has a nice savoriness, but just that, that nice peach flavor going on. Bacon, you, come on, who doesn't like bacon? Great cook, I'm very happy with this. The, the meter proved itself once again. Uh, every time I've used that, it never ceases to amaze me. Great job, <laughs> great job on designing that meter. Anyway, thanks for stopping by, I appreciate it. Uh, there again will be a code, I think it's ballistic, and it'll basically be free shipping, but you have to get it done before the end of this weekend. So I'll have the date and all the details down below. Thanks for stopping by. See you in the next video. Cheers.